Welcome aboard, traveler, to the Moon Dancer. Pardon my peg leg, I got it chopped off by a lunar dragon years ago in my youth. But I hope you're ready to scour the star systems of wild space. But if you're still deciding on what kind of character you're going to play, may I provide some suggestions? With space as large as it is, I'm sure it can be quite a bit overwhelming. But meet me in my cabin, and I'll set you with the perfect fit before we set off. We might need you as prepared as possible before we go where no humanoid has ever gone before. Hello Acolytes! Welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons & Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. If you can believe it, Spelljammer is out, and it is now available for your D&D games to travel space, stars, nebulas, and a menagerie of alien creatures. This new book set includes a guide to wild space, a book of new monsters, and a whole new spacefaring adventure. The question is, how will your character fit into this vastness of space? If you are playing the published adventure, how are you connected to the overall story? And what about your NPCs if you're a DM? Explore with me the depths of wild space, the playable races, some backgrounds and feats that will inspire some flavor, and the monstrous creatures that may also create a unique character. Over 70 evocative concepts, all to create something that you can't wait to push through the heart of a star. If you want a copy of the book, you can find it through a link in the description below. Starting with wild space itself, it is the airless void surrounding a wild space system. A wild space system is a neighborhood of celestial and planetary bodies, a lot like a solar system, but sometimes doesn't need a sun. If you're in this wild space system and you travel out far enough, you are met with a faint silvery haze that marks the boundary into the astral plane. This haze more colorfully known as the Silver Void. Once past this plane, you find yourself in the Astral Sea, an infinitely vast and starry expanse. You will find that the air is actually abundant, and everything in it is in an ageless status, not requiring food or drink, and never aging. Other voids or dimensional portals you may find in wild space are called color pools. Connections to all the other planes of existence outlined in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Some subclasses that you might consider to play and be tied to these larger elements of wild space might be the Graviturgy Wizard, obviously for its influence on gravity, the Twilight Cleric or Stars Druid from the Expanse of the Stars, or a Divine Soul Sorcerer that gets their radiance from something other than a god. Instead, a white dwarf star, or a nebula, a reflection of the moon, or a quasar from a black hole. Or what if you had a creation bard get magic from the Big Bang itself, the element of creation, if the lore aligns with your Spelljammer origin, of course. Or the fabric of space-time itself, with the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, or the Chronergy Wizard. But we are getting a little sciency, and you will find that many things in this fantasy meet space setting, that science really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But that's okay, because we got a whole lot of magic. But be a Horizon Walker Ranger, setting out to find these color pools, or a Light Cleric Warden of the Silver Void. But in order to navigate all of these astral elements, you will most likely be aboard a spell jamming ship a ship with enough magical gravity to keep an air bubble around it, allowing you to breathe, and contains a magical chair that allows a spellcaster to pilot the ship and go to warp speed. And there are actually a surprisingly amount of numerous ships, including the Bombard, a Damselfly, a Hammerhead, Night Spider, Star Moth, Turtle Ship, a Nautiloid, and a half dozen more. We'll come back to a lot of these later, but a cool one to tie into your character would be a living ship. One that has a tree ant attached to it that replenishes the air supply within. A nature cleric or a circle of the land druid would be a great addition as a caretaker of the tree, and by association, the ship. And I've actually been working on a wizard spell jamming subclass called the Helm Wizard that specializes in piloting these spell jammers. Abilities include better attunement, quicker maneuverability, being able to target your ship like it's a creature with your spells, as well as piloting your ship from afar. Along with a star jumper ranger that galvanizes itself against the dangerous elements of wild space and attacks with the radiance of the stars. It will be a part of my monthly magazine for Patreon members, or you'll be able to find it at the beginning of the month on my website. If you enjoy my content and wish to support me in creating content like this, that is the perfect way to do it. All links are down in the description below, and thank you. But now let's get to the actual content of the book, where we are given some new races to play with. 
including the Astral Elves, who are actually among the first to dwell among the Silver Void. Perfect for your life cleric I alluded to earlier. These elves also forge packs with solar dragons, making a unique ascendant dragon monk or a sun soul monk. We also have auto gnomes, a construct created with free will and some with a real biological heart, which is awesome. Uh, perhaps this heart is a piece of a dead gods who is floating around in the astral sea and creating a unique undead warlock. Or you created your own heart as a forge cleric. We also see the Gif, or Jif, a hippo race that was blessed by a now dead war god with adeptness at firearms. They almost exclusively drive bombard ships equipped with large cannons. And perhaps you're an artillerist artificer that specializes in these cannons, or a battlemaster fighter off to find the shell of your now dead god. Hadazes are gliding simian creatures that are created by a wizard's elixir and liberated by their associates. Perhaps you strive to recreate this elixir to further understand your origin as an alchemist artificer or circle of dreams druid with the awaken spell. And then we have my probably favorite race in this setting, the plasmoids, the intelligent and amorphous oozes. I think that this would actually be really fun to be a moon druid with all the animals that you can turn into, just being you shaping into animal shapes, but still being your jelly self. And the elementals that you turn into later in life levels could be based off of the four humors of blood, yellow, and black bile, and phlegm. If you don't know what those are, look them up, I promise they fit. Lastly, we have the Thrycreen, a forearm monstrosity that has a penchant for telepathy and psionics, especially Thrycreen mystics. Be an arcane trickster or a psy knife rogue and put those spindly arms to good use. As an honorable mention, we have to mention the Gif, a former slave race to the Mind Flayers but escaped with powerful psionic abilities. Great for your Psy Warrior fighters. Now they hunt the Mind Flayers down throughout the Astral Plane. Gith are not unfortunately in the Spelljammer book, but it is a well-known resident of this setting. You can find them in the Morgancanon's Monsters of the Multiverse. But this book does include some extra backgrounds as well, including the Astral Drifter, an explorer that was affected by countless years of exposure to the husks of dead gods and psychic winds of the Astral Sea, awakening an Astral Self Monk. The other background we got is Wild Spacer, a more common background to a character that grew up on an asteroid settlement or a spell jamming ship. Ready for adventure and exploration of space, and it's perfect for your Oath of Glory paladin. Some other backgrounds, hey, while we're at it, might also be a good addition to your base faring character located in other books, including Arthropologist and Archaeologist, interested in alien culture, Pirate or criminal if you're more into the space pirate type. A clan crafter if your planet to planet trade is a little bit more honest. A hermit or outlander if you live by yourself on some adrift asteroid. Or a sage if your occupation comes more from charting the stars than traversing them. And hey, while we're at it, let's talk about feats. None that are included in this book, but many that would fit these kind of characters. An artificer initiate for anyone dappling in space fantasy age technology. Chef, because every ship needs a good chef. Dungeon Delver, because after all, it is still Dungeons and & Dragons, and you'll find many unique dungeons in different planets. Resilient, because the dangers of airspace might require good saving throws. Gift of the Chromatic Dragon, but this time from a solar or lunar dragon. With firearms being prevalent, the gunner feat will come in handy. Linguist, with the many alien languages. And of course, with the Astral Sea bestowing many of the denizens with psionic abilities, telepathic or telekinetic, or Magic Initiate would all work. But of course, be creative and try tying feats to the expanse of space. Who knows, you might find ones that you've never used before. But now let's get into the adventure itself, called The Light of Xeraxis. Xeraxis? Zera I don't know. There isn't a pronunciation guide for this one. But now, there might be a little spoilers, just a heads up, but I will try to keep them vague enough to not give anything away, but still help you tie your character into the adventure. Now, interesting enough, the, the start of this adventure is actually anywhere. As space is so large, it assumes that the world your character is on is any world. So drop this adventure in your current homebrew world as something devastating happens to your world and you need to leave it in order to save it. Or use the separate introductory adventure Spelljammer Academy and be one of the students as everything goes down. But I think that we can tie your character in more deeply than that. A central point of this adventure is a location called the Rock of Brawl, and it's just, it's gorgeous. It's an asteroid base born from a pirate haven and grown into a bustling trade settlement. A pirate named Captain Brawl established the settlement, 
and you very well could be a swashbuckling rogue descendant of his. Unfortunately, some other pirate individuals seized control of this rock as the city grew and is now ruled by a Prince Andrew, who obtained the throne in Starhaven after a mysterious death of a brother. Perfect for an eloquence bard character that wants to keep Andrew in charge and may help in keeping familial secrets. Other positions of power include the Under Barons, who you could play as or be a rogue assassin whose mind is not their own, created by the unknowable one. Your DM will know what I'm talking about. And even though the city is relatively lawless, there is some form of law enforcement in the form of Magistrate's Watch that I assume reside near the donjon but as well as the Valken's Legion, a mercenary company, and a great place for a champion fighter. Moving across the city, we can find the Library of Spheres, perfect for your knowledge clerics, the Royal Theatre Company for a fun, connected glamour bard, Almander's Star Charts for a great start for your Circle of Stars Druid, or you might enjoy being a thief rogue from Grasper's Reclamations who specialize in recovering magical items for clients. At the Juggler's Folk Guildhouse, you might find a Kensei Monk performer as the place doubles as a Thieves' Guild. Their main competitor is the Red Mask Guildhouse, a more violent group of youngsters that you could join as a Berserker Barbarian. The Syndiath Line is a wild space charter service that a Fey Wanderer Ranger might excel in, or smuggle weapons with the Smith's Coster as a Hunter Ranger. In that same vein, Xeno Termination LTD hires themselves out to capture or kill formidable creatures in wild space, great for your Monster Slayer Ranger. But enough about Rangers, let's move to the Mage's Guild Hall, a spellcasting headquarters good for really any school of wizard, and then the Lake Brawl itself be a fathomless warlock in charge of refilling the lake with chunks of ice asteroids. At the Murkane Agency, you find creatures called the Murkane, who specialize in the trade business of spell jamming helms and magical items. Unfortunately, they are not a playable race, but easily can be reflavored from a Goliath stat block. And then prove your magical item and business know-how with the Lore Bard. And now flipping the asteroid over, moving to the bottom side of the Rock of Brawl, we now find the naval base and the fields, where a circle of land druid can find solace away from the bustling city above. As for the rest of the adventure, you will stumble across a solitary star charting tower filled with auto gnomes, an opportunity for a star's druid auto gnome, and you might come across some vampires with questionable morality, giving you great opportunity for an Oathbreaker Paladin but instead of breaking your oath, your oath is just the vampire code, including things like don't eat each other or don't sing holy hymns because it hurts our ears. And if you like the darker side of things, you will later find a system called Doom Space, with what looks like a shadowy black hole in the center instead of a star, called the Eye of Doom. Some say that the black hole is actually some great horror, bathing the wild space system with negative energy. Perhaps you are from this system and as such are a great old one warlock. And may not be too keen on returning here. But one thing that this whole adventure kind of circles around is the empire of the astral elves that harness magic from a dying star. It is no spoilers to say that this group is a villain in the campaign, but you'd still be open to being an Eldritch Knight astral elf defector or an Oath of the Crown that is trying to get to the bottom of the corruption of their own empire. Depending on how you are tied to this adventure, I imagine can result in countless different outcomes and really interesting roleplay. Now, there are also many, many new monsters and creatures given in the book set that also give inspiration for distinctive and quirky character concepts, and we'll go through some of my favorites. Artux are intelligent yet aggressive plant-like aliens that would make for great spore druids that are studying them. Perhaps their druidic language is akin to the pops and hisses of the Artuk language. We also have Twinga astronauts that ride space guppies, both making for great Swarm Keeper Rangers or Cavalier Fighters if you're small enough to ride one as well. Or just get either as a Wizard Familiar. The Cosmic Horror, which I alluded to earlier, would make for a great terrifying Warlock. The Dowar is a Spelljammer equivalent to the Jawas, really, uh, being amazing at trade businesses. Reflavor a Kenku and add the Telepathic Feet and you basically have a Dowar. Kindoris are giant celestial whales, and a unique origin for a space marine biologist, divine soul sorcerer. Of course, we can't forget the lunar dragons that reside on moons and have a unique phasing ability. Perhaps your phantom rogue learned their techniques from them, and makes their soul token scales from their back. Murder comets are a unique one, but born from a spellcaster that combined their own magic essence with elemental magic. 
A fun way for a transmutation wizard to become immortal instead of becoming a lich. Perhaps that is your character's motivation, to learn how to turn yourself into one. Surlons are psionic aliens with the ability to molt into another humanoid creature. Maybe perfect for a shifty whispers bard that looks human but wasn't always that way. Riegers I freaking love and I really wish it was a playable race. They are cephalopods that have evolved more of a human shape. They are like some octopuses in a way that they can change the coloration on their skin. Unlike octopuses though, their only directive is to wage war as a form of art form, seeing it as beautiful. Each wield a trident that would make for a great blade singer wizard, and a magic item that allows themselves to duplicate themselves, making a great Echo Knight fighter. As another psionic race, I would reflavor the gift if you wanted to play one. We've also mentioned the Solar Dragon before, but really anything having to do with radiant damage will work. Maybe a holy warrior that absorbed its power after killing it, taking on the Oath of Conquest Paladin subclass. And then on the more terrifying note, both Space Clowns and Vampirates would be a horrifying reflavor to the Dampir lineage if you wanted to play one. With Vampirates having a penchant for attracting shadows, it might also be a great place for a shadow sorcerer. And then we have a fan favorite with the giant space hamster that can also come in miniature form. Perfect for a Beastmaster Ranger or Swarm Keeper if you want a lot of them. Now, some might say that they will play a ranger when pigs fly, and hey, good news. We now have the Space Swine, which makes up for another great Beastmaster, but also a Cavalier Mount if you're small enough. Surins are really fun and easily reflavored with the Lizard Folk stat blocks, with Necrotic, Siphoning, and Poison Bombs, be a Necromancy Wizard or an Alchemist Artificer, respectively. Starlight Apparitions are another amazing favorite of mine, where instead of an undead spirit staying behind because of unfinished business, this celestial form of a spirit stayed behind to be a warning to travelers not to succumb to the same fate that they did. Perhaps it haunts you or keeps you from a dreadful fate, by fighting alongside you as another Echo Knight, or guiding you as a Scribe's Wizard Awakened Mind. But speaking of divine purpose, the Zodar is a silent exoskeleton creature that looks like futuristic armor. Only able to speak three times in its lifetime, they are relentless in the pursuit of a goal that only it knows. Both the Autonome or Warforged stat block might be a good reflavor if you wanted to play it, and then tack on an Armor or Artificer or an Oath of Devotion Paladin subclass. And as an honorable mention, we have to mention the Mind Flayers, not in this book, but definitely a force to be reckoned with, flying around in their nautiloid ships. Now, being captured by one of them might result in you becoming an aberrant mind sorcerer as you await Ceramorphosis, where you change into one, or you figure out a way to not do that. If you want other monsters to play with in the Spelljammer setting, make sure to reference the Monstrous Compendium for Spelljammer if you have it on D&D Beyond. But in reality, this is space that we're talking about. If there is anything that has limitless potential and opportunities to bring into a character or a campaign, it is here. With spatial anomalies, space-time, and alien civilizations of all kinds, I hope that I helped fill the void of character creation and inspire you to get creative. And if you're looking for other character ideas for other settings like Radiant Citadel or Wildmount, check out this playlist here. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.